make sure each of you has this. did that chart with Kara where you showed which words go with which synonyms? Mm -hmm. You remember that? And when we talked about available, do you remember the words that were synonyms for available? Obtainable. Obtainable. What else did we have? Usable. Usable. There was one more. Accessible. Accessible. Yeah. And do you remember how we talked about all those words can be synonyms for available? But are all those words synonyms for each other? No. Do they all mean exactly the same thing? No. no. So that's what we're going to talk about today. When we have words that, for some reason, mean different things, even though we think they should mean the same thing. So I want to tell you a story and give you an example about this. So uh, before I came to ESU, I lived in East Africa. I lived in a small little country called Djibouti. And if you want to know where that is, I'll show you on the map at the end of class. Yeah, and so, um, so let's imagine here, this is me, and these are my students. And one day I came back from vacation, and they said, oh, Miss Hannah, you're back from vacation. It's good to see you. Wow, you look so fat. <laughs> <laughs> and so then this was me over here, and I said, really? <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm glad to be back, and it's good to see both of you, too. <laughs> so that's what we said to each other. Now, that's one meaning. We call this the denotation. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We've got two different kinds of meanings. We have denotation and connotation. So we're going to go over that. I'm going to explain all that. And then the different types of connotation meaning. We have positive, neutral, and negative. And then finally, we're going to use an English dictionary today. I'm going to show you one I like for English learners. And we're going to use that to help you understand different kinds of connotations, meaning the positive, the neutral, and the negative. So what we said, this was denotation. That's what comes out of your mouth. But let's look at what we were thinking, what we felt. My students thought, oh, she looks so good. She must have eaten a lot and had a really good time during vacation. You know, they, what do you think? Do you think they had bad thoughts or good thoughts about me? Good. Yeah, I would say those are good thoughts. You know, they're trying to tell me something nice. Hey, you look good. You had a good vacation. Now look at my thoughts. Does someone want to read my thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Fatima, will you read my thoughts? I am not fat. How could they say that? I can I take care of myself. Mm -hmm. That was my thoughts. I looked at myself and I thought, well, <laughs> I'm not fat. <laughs> How can they say that? That's so mean. So that's what we felt inside. So what was the problem here? That's what I want to ask you guys. The problem was denotation versus connotation. My students and I, we were using the same denotation of the word fat. Denotation means the dictionary definition. It means I look up fat in the dictionary, and what would I find? Just off the top of your head, if I look up fat in the dictionary, what would I find? What definition? Yeah, it means being a little big, too heavy, yeah? Something about, you know, bigger or heavier than normal. Right? So we both meant the same thing there. We both meant, you know, bigger than normal. But we had different connotations or different emotional connections with the word fat. So when they were using the word fat, what kind of connotation or emotional connection 
did they have with that word? Was it, would you say, was it positive, neutral, or negative? Neutral. My, this is my students. Positive. Positive. Yeah. positive, right? They thought they had a good feeling about the word fat. You know, they thought, this is a way we can tell you something good. What about what I felt about the word fat? Did I have a positive connotation, a neutral, which means like none or zero, yeah. not good, not bad? Yeah. Or did I have a negative connotation? Negative. Negative. Yeah, in the US, it's really insulting if you call someone fat. <laughs> and you think, hey, I'm not fat, but in Djibouti, it's a compliment. So that was the problem, was that we had different emotional or cultural ideas about the word. Um, so we've talked about this, how a word can have different connotations, positive, neutral, or negative. So this is just to kind of give you an illustration which you have. This is how I remember it, all the Ds. The notation is the dec uh, dictionary definition. I remember the three Ds. Yeah, D, 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 denotation, dictionary, definition. Um, and I also think of it as what has to do with your mind, your brain, something that's logical. I put a brain here to help you remember. Now connotation, I remember with three C's. Connotation is the cultural or emotional connection of a word. So I remember three D's and three C's. Um, and so for this, usually it's about your feelings, the feelings that you have when a word comes up, or about a hidden meaning that you don't really find in the dictionary. So for this, it's more about your heart. So I put a heart here. Okay, and then here I put also different forms of the word. We have verb, connotes, connotation, the Asian is an end, uh, noun ending, and tiv, that's an adjective ending. So I'm not going to test you on that, but I just wanted to show you. you. You will see these words in different forms. So lastly, we've talked about this three kinds. We have positive or good connotation. Yeah, that was what my students thought about that. We have negative or bad connotation. That's what I thought about that. And then we have neutral which neutral is a word we use a lot. Neutral means not good or not bad. So it's not like normal. Question. It's normal. It's like normal, yeah. So for example, if a word has a neutral connotation, that means we're probably just talking about a denotation, a dictionary definition. So usually if it's not negative, it's not positive, it's just the regular denotation because we feel nothing. We have no connection with the word. So we are going to do a little practice. So on your papers, on the back side, turn to the back, see we have what we said. So just in the little blank to remind yourself, I want you to write a denotation of fact, as our students and I were talking about. Denotation. Remember, it is just the dictionary definition. So if you want to look it up, you can. But we talked about it in class, what it means. So I just want you to take one minute, write the denotation of fat here. And then on the next, the next slide, we have two blanks for connotation. So in the first one, I want you to write connotation that my students had about fat. The second one is connotation that I had about fat. So just those three blanks I want you to fill in. We'll just take one minute, two minutes, really fast.
as you guys are working, I'm going to come around and give you two slips of paper. So just wait, and when everyone's finished, I'll give you instructions for what to do with these. you guys finish filling in the blanks, it shouldn't take too long. It should just be very simple. Mm -hmm. Good, so for those of you, if you're still working on it, that's okay. But let me just explain what we're going to do next. So each of you has two sentences, right? Mm -hmm. And you'll notice on each sentence, there is one word that's underlined. Mm -hmm. You all see that? Mm -hmm. What I want you to do is look at that sentence and decide about the connotation or the emotional and cultural meaning of the word that's underlined. And then I want you to come up here and put it under positive, neutral, or negative. For yeah, so you'll put you know maybe one sentence in positive, maybe one sentence in negative, or maybe one in neutral and one in negative. So we have tape here. If you need to use a dictionary, that's fine. Or if you're not sure, you have a question, just raise your hand. Okay. But for those of you who are finished. Go ahead and start on that. So here I just want you to write, what is the denotation I've got here? She said, this is general, but I want to know specifically what is the denotation of that.
definition of that. But here you got those right. People are still working on their sentences. Is there anyone who didn't take them yet? Yes, everyone got them? Okay, great. All right, so when I read your sentence, I want you to tell me why you put it in the category you did. So for example, who had number three? I like to say money. Okay. Come on, MGA, read your sentence and tell us why you think positive. I like to save money, so I look for inexpensive items at the grocery store. So inexpensive was our word. Why did you say that's positive? Um, well, this person wants to save her his money, mm -hmm. and it is good for that person to find cheap, which means an expensive item, so yeah, that's very good for us, right? Yeah. So, so do you guys see how with inexpensive, we have a positive idea? Mm -hmm. Oh, this person just wants to save money. You know, they are smart. We have a positive idea about inexpensive. Now, what? where's number, the other number three? Oh, where did you put it? Right here. Okay, can you read that for us? My friend took me to a cheap restaurant. The food wasn't very good. Okay, so what's the underlying word there? Cheap. Yeah. So why did you say negative for cheap? Um, this person said the food wasn't very good at the restaurant. And 
this in this sentence, cheap means really bad. Yeah. In this case, cheap means, oh, my friend took me out, but she took me to a bad restaurant. It was cheap. It wasn't good. So what about the denotation? The denotation of cheap and expensive. Is it the same? Denotation. What's denotation? Dictionary. Dictionary definition. Is the denotation between inexpensive and cheap the same? Yes. Yes. Yeah. What What do they both mean? Not expensive. Uh, don't something that doesn't cost a lot. Doesn't cost a lot of money. But inexpensive has a positive connotation because we feel like, yeah, that's right, it's smart to, to buy inexpensive things. But cheap, heaven forbid if someone <coughs> calls you cheap, say, oh, that person is so cheap. They don't spend money on anything. They don't buy gifts. They don't take anyone to dinner. They're so cheap. It's like an insult. <laughs> so cheap has, you say positive or negative connotation? Negative. So do you see the difference? You can sit down. Oh, okay. <laughs> you see the difference there? How two words, they can have the same denotation, mean the same thing from the dictionary, but we feel differently about them. They make us feel different things, so we use them in different ways. What do you think? Does that make sense? You guys have questions? Are you still unsure? Some of us are still a little unsure. Okay. Uh, who had number eight? The flowers give off. Okay. Sayuri, can you come? Yeah. Okay. Can you read number eight? The flowers give off a lovely smell. Okay. Smell was our underlined word. Now, what do you think? Why is it positive? Flowers smell so nice. Now, where's the other number eight here? Okay, read that for me. The farm to it with stench. Stench. Mm -hmm. House. Yeah. The burned food left a stench in the house. So, stench is our underlying word. So, what did you think, Sairi? Do smell and stench mean the same thing? Stench means smell. Yeah. They are both smell. But smell has a positive connotation in this sentence. Sometimes it's neutral. Sometimes neutral. Burned food that leaves a stench, that has a negative connotation. Stench has the connotation of something that smells bad. Ugh. <laughs> Don't want that. But the denotation, is it the same or different? The same. It's the same. Mm -hmm. So what about, would we say, the flowers give off a lovely stench? Can no. you say that again? <laughs> How, why not? Because stench is says this bad smell. But if you say lovely stench, mm -hmm. Maybe people didn't know what, what you want to say. That's right. Stench has a bad, a negative connotation. We think of bad things when we hear stench. So would we describe flowers that have a stench? No, because flowers usually smell very nice. Okay, we'll, we'll do a few more examples. We won't do all of these, but I hope as we do a few more, it will become clear to you. So, thank you. Okay, let's look at uh, number 12. A gentleman always, okay, how we have yours? Okay, please read that. A gentleman always treats others with respect. Okay, so our word is gentleman. And why did you say positive? Because uh, it's, uh, this man always treats others with respect. It means uh, he's nice and uh, uh, 
uh, uh, calling to two actors. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, when we hear gentlemen, we always think of, ooh, he's a gentleman. He's very nice, very respectful. He treats other people well. Where's your other sentence? This. Okay. I asked a guy at the airport for directions. Okay, so there our word is guy. Mm -hmm. So why did you put it in the neutral category? Yeah, she just said a guy just means a person. It doesn't mean an active or positive. So it's neutral. Yeah, what do you guys think? Do you agree with guy having a neutral connotation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You agree or disagree? I agree. Agree? Yeah, because we don't know. Um, guy, it can be positive or it can be negative. We don't really know. Um, so yeah, that has just a normal or a neutral, meaning zero connotation. So what about denotation for guy and gentleman? What about the denotation? Are they the same or different in denotation? Different. Different? Okay. Lee, why do you say different? Okay, so 
We saw a beautiful antique statue at the museum. Our word is antique. Antique, okay? So why did you say positive? Um, at first, that is a uh, adjective, and before that, it has a beautiful soul. I think that is a good adjective, so mm -hmm. it could be positive. Yeah, it could be positive because it goes with beautiful, and we're talking about uh, a statue in a museum. We think good things about that. Where's your other one? Uh, I need a new computer. Mine is outdated. I need a new computer. Mine is outdated. Outdated. So why did you give outdated a negative? Because I think a meaning of outdated means that old is um, not catching the fashion or so. You make it a negative? Yeah, that's right. I think, um, what do you guys think? My computer is, or sorry, I need a new computer. Mine is outdated. Is outdated negative, positive, or neutral? Negative. negative. Right? Because we say like, oh, my iPhone, you know, I have iPhone 1. It's so outdated. Ugh. I can't do anything with it. Um, so we have negative ideas about that. Now, one more question for you, Lena. What are the denotations, the dictionary definition, what are the denotations of outdated and antique? It means old. Old. They both mean old. But there is a difference. We call the statue, do we say, oh, this statue. It's so outdated. Do we say that? What do you think? Sayuri, you're not sure. We, we don't call it outdated because it's not a piece of technology. It's not something we're using. It's something that's a part of history. It's a part of art. So we call it antique. It has such a nice sound. Oh, it's antique. It's not just old. It's antique. But outdated is used. That's for technology. You know, or information. If information is old, we say, oh, don't want that. It's outdated. So what about, would you say, oh, look, at, here's my computer. It's antique. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to have an antique computer? Yeah. <laughs> would you use an antique computer for school? No. no. Maybe you could collect it, you know, keep it in your closet. <laughs> but it won't help you for school or for work or things like that. So you see, again, you can sit down. Thank you. The difference, the denotation is exactly the same, both old, but the way we use them is different. Why? Why do we use them in different ways? What do you guys think? Each of them has different connotation. Exactly. You use words differently if they have different Connotations. You use them in different kinds of sentences. Do you guys have, what questions do you have? Questions about ideas, denotation, connotation, about vocabulary, positive, neutral, negative? What do you think? Uh, connotation like a concept. Connotation? Yeah. Um, yeah, if you want to think of it like a concept, it's like the idea that the word puts in your head. Is it a positive idea, a negative idea? So, yeah, sort of similar. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All words have a different connotation. All words. It's a good question. Some words only have uh, a neutral connotation. Some words we don't have emotions about. They're all neutral. So in that case, we just say, uh, they have a connotation, but it's zero. It's neutral. So not every word has a positive or a negative. Some words are neutral only. You know, for example, um, the, T-H-E, the, 
Does that have a positive or a negative? No. There's no real connotation there. You know, so words like that, no connotation. But most nouns and verbs have some kind of connotation. It's the hint on culture. Yeah. Yeah, it depends a lot on culture. Uh, it depends on social things and the region where you come from. For example, uh, even like there's a difference, you know, between American English and British English. And we may have the same words, but the American connotation and the British connotation might be different. So if you understand just the basics, just the idea of connotation, that will help you understand vocabulary in a deep uh, way. You'll understand the next level. So any other questions? Okay, last thing. Um, does everyone who here has like a, a phone with internet or an iPad or something with internet? Yeah. Okay, raise your hand if you do not have that. Is there anyone who does not have that? Wow, you're all so technologically advanced. <laughs> okay, so take out your phone or your iPad or whatever you have. And I want you to go to this website. WarnersDictionary.com. See that? WarnersDictionary.com. Are you guys there? If you need to share, if yours doesn't work or you forgot yours, you can share, just find a partner. It's no problem. Are you all there? This dictionary, I want to show it to you guys because I think it will help you. You're all in pretty advanced now. And if you just look up words in like a Chinese English dictionary or Arabic English or Japanese English, you do not learn the connotation. You only get a synonym. So sometimes that's why Kara will tell you no, that's not right. You're using a bad dictionary. When you become advanced, it's better to use an English dictionary. And this one, you can see, it's for guys like you. It's for ESL and EFL English learner students. So the definitions are simple, and they give you lots of examples. So for example, let's try the word home. Okay, so it tells me, it gives me the word. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think the audio is going to work. But normally if you click here, uh, they will tell you the word so you can hear it. And then we have, do you see these numbers here? One, two, three. You guys see those numbers? One, two, three. What do these numbers tell us? It's the definition. Different definitions, yes. right? So we have three different definitions. So what about, uh, let's look at number one. Jenny, will you read the definition for number one? for you so you can learn how is this word used. So, um, Nana, will you read me the first example? Right now, he's home in a small apartment. Okay, so what do you think? In this first definition, is what kind of connotation does home have? Positive, negative, or neutral? Neutral. 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 Yeah, do we have any feelings about this? Does it, no, it's just a place where a person lives. So when you look up a word here, you can see all the definitions and how they are used. And we can also learn a little bit about connotation. So for example, let's look at, um, let's look at number four. Um, Mong Wen, will you read the definition for number four? The place where someone lives or ordinary comes from. The place to which you feel most strongly attached. Okay, now will you read me that first? 
first example sentence? In the book. Well, when, will you read me the first example sentence? Uh, no, it will always be home to me. Okay, here we go. What about this definition, this denotation of home? Does it have, does it have a connotation? Does it have positive, yes. negative, or neutral? Positive. What do you think? Positive. Abdullah, why do you say positive? Because the uh, comes from which felt most strongly mm -hmm. attached. Yeah. Uh, the place to which you feel strongly attached. Say, oh, I miss my home in Saudi Arabia. I want to see my family at my home in China or Japan. You know, when you think of home like that, with that denotation, you have a good, a positive connotation about it. So if you look things up in an English dictionary, if you look carefully at the different definitions and the examples, you can see a little bit of connotation. Unfortunately, we don't have a dictionary for connotations. Dictionaries are for denotations. But if you look it up and you look carefully, especially at the examples, you can see, oh, maybe that's positive, or oh, maybe that sounds negative. So that's the best way if you want to know in English. If you keep using your Arabic English, Chinese English, Japanese English, Spanish English dictionary, you will not find connotation like this, okay? So let's do a quick exercise before you guys go. Um, so do you remember two words from yesterday? We had expose and appreciate. Remember these two yes. words? Expose and appreciate. So I have uh, papers for you all. What I want you to do is you will just look up that one word, either appreciate or expose. And for each definition, I want you to tell me, is it positive, neutral, or negative connotation? Okay? And then quickly here, we just have matching, just to help you remember the words we learned today. Okay? So raise your, I'll let you pick the word you want. Raise your hand if you want to look up appreciate. So our choices are appreciate and expose. So this is for people who want to, you want to appreciate? Okay, appreciate. Have just the right amount, good. You want to appreciate? Okay, so the rest of you want to expose? Expose, okay. each definition, you don't need to do that. Just look at the definition. So like for definition one, tell me, positive, neutral, or negative? Look at definition two. Positive, neutral, negative. That's all you need to do. Okay, we'll make it simple. And then do the matching uh, at the bottom. And as soon as you finish that, we're done with class.
dictionary too. Um, can you make a share your dictionary? Okay, I'll share it with you.
there are a lot that are neutral, that's okay. That happens sometimes. No, I can't whenever. I just left it running. I figured you could cut it off at the end. <laughs> <laughs> 